We would normally have tens of thousands of guests here at Kennedy Space Center to view the launch, but even though we couldn't host a lot of people here, you can still join us every historic mission from right where you are. Demonstration mission two. Finally be sending humans to the International Space Station. The purpose of today's demonstration mission is to put Crew Dragon through the final operational paces that are necessary to officially certify the vehicle for human spaceflight. From launch all the way to docking and ending with splashdown. It's going to be the first time a commercially built spacecraft will launch people to the space station from the same launch pad that first sent humans to the moon more than 50 years ago. Yeah, it's so amazing to see this first live look in the room. There's astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley sitting in those seats um, being helped by the suit technicians. Uh, this room was first used for the first Apollo mission, Apollo 7, um, that they suited up in there in uh, 1968. And there they are uh, giving a thumbs up. That looks like Doug giving a thumbs up there. Last time this room was used for this purpose that you see here was STS-135 in 2011, and Doug Hurley was one of the astronauts in there doing that. So this is really amazing to see. It was pretty cool. We heard that earlier this morning they, they stepped outside with a cup of coffee in hand. Oh, we've got some, some visitors in the room now. It looks like uh, SpaceX founder Elon Musk uh, to the right of your screen and NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. Of course, you see a, a partition there to keep them a safe distance from the crew, but they're in there to say hello, wish them well uh, before they depart the suit up room. That's really cool to see there. And, and we can't hear what they're saying, but uh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in there right now. Um, they're super pumped about this, ready to go. And right now it's just, you know, we just need the weather to cooperate. Um, you know, we see just a handful of folks in the room and we've acknowledged that the distance that uh, Mr. Musk and Mr. Bridenstine are standing from the astronauts. And they, of course they have masks on. It's getting real, it's getting real. <laughs> So I remember the very first time that I saw Bob and Doug in these suits at a crew training event at SpaceX. Not only did they look really awesome, you know, astronauts tend to look pretty cool, um, but the suits looked like they were from the future. Um, our team designed the spacesuits to maximize safety and functionality with a little bit of style. Those are the iconic doors that Bob and Doug are going to be walking out in just a minute. But first, we want to pause to honor today's efforts with our national anthem and the incomparable Kelly Clarkson treats us now with her virtual rendition from her home to yours. Mose, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we had at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright There's that shot now. So we're looking at the back of uh, Elon Musk, Jim Bridenstine, and Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, of course, there's a small group of media there also. And so we've we kind of blocked this very carefully to maintain social distancing and those that can't have the masks on. But uh, there's the Teslas waiting for them. They got the meatball. There's the worm in the background and the worm on the back of the Teslas. So Leland, I know we were talking about this earlier. You had some mixed feelings about the worm, right? I mean, the worm, the meatball, you know, when I was at NASA Langley, we changed over to the meatball. There's another view there of uh, the, the crosswalk there is where Bob and Doug are gonna walk out any moment. This is a really incredible moment. Yeah, and one of the one of the crewmates that was with him was Rex Wallham that we're going to talk to later. And we have, oh, here they come. Oh, here they are. 
Here they come, NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley. They've each made this journey twice before for the space shuttle missions, but they've never done this in a SpaceX spacesuit. They've never done this together, and they've never done this on their way to head to a commercially built rocket and spacecraft to head to space. Well, I was looking for that Astro van, and I see these white Teslas with meatballs and worms on them. It's just a, a new era in space travel. Oh, yeah, they're riding in Tesla Model Xs. They have been equipped with cooling units, so once they sit inside, that umbilical that I was referring to earlier uh, will connect to the spacesuit to provide cooling while they're inside of the vehicle. And you can see them talking and waving with their families now. We just saw them do a virtual hug uh, with their sons. Here's Megan and Karen and their sons, yeah. They're the dads. <laughs> the dads, yeah. We're in Florida, it's super hot, super muggy, so how are they staying cool? There are these portable cooling units. We had one at the ONC building, or sorry, two at the ONC building. There are two in the Teslas. There'll be two in the elevators, and then two in the white room when they arrive on the crew arm. So we're just keeping the cool air flowing through the suits. There's actually ducting integrated into the suits to keep them cool. And you can see they're saying goodbye to their families. This is awesome. Yeah, it's awesome eh, that their their families get to come up to the window and obviously get a little closer than oh, everybody wow. else. There's Megan, <laughs> her uh, son. Yeah. Oh my gosh. These are precious <laughs> moments. This is where just what, this is what it's all about. As I mentioned before, it's about the people. It's about the families and working together as one community to get Doug and Bob launching off to the cosmos to the space station. Well, you think about STEM education, but well, this is totally STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And I think, you know, SpaceX has done an incredible job of making things look really beautiful and functional and, and you know, everything just fits perfectly. I mean, obviously, it's not just what the weather conditions are here. They've got to think about downrange in case of an abort, mm -hmm. uh, make sure it's okay for recovery if we get into a situation like that, which is unlikely. So this elevator is going to take them up to level 255. It's not 255 floors, but that's 255 feet. And here they come. And those are the stairs uh, Lauren mentioned. They're at the two, it's the 255 foot level right now. Yeah, that's the view right there that they're looking at. And again, they're just kind of taken in the sights before they go into the white room. Looks like they're signing something in there right now. Yeah, we give them a black Sharpie to sign the white room. It's starting a new tradition. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't do that. That's nice. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a good tradition. Yeah. Cross the moat and <laughs> run over and get in the in the vehicle with Bob and Doug. Right, but, uh, now Bob's going in. Yeah. There are four seats configured inside Dragon right now. They're numbered one to four from right to left. Doug Hurley is in seat two or the commander seat. Bob Bankin is in seat three, which is on Crew Dragon is the pilot seat. And obviously nobody is in seats one and four today. They've been in those seats for a couple hours now. Uh, they typically get inside of Dragon a little over two and a half hours ahead of launch. A few minutes ahead of schedule uh, right now with hatch close and you can see the pad teams there just working on things now. And that looks like a view of Air Force One. President Trump uh, on board making his way to Kennedy Space Center to hopefully view a launch at 4.33 this afternoon. And there they are in view of the launch pad. So no doubt he's looking out the window at Bob and Doug on the pad. That's uh, got to be an amazing sight to see from on board Air Force One. The last president to witness a launch from here at Kennedy Space Center was Bill Clinton. That was back in October 1998 for STS 95 so it's been a minute what so it's been a minute bro what are you talking about man and you've heard mike taylor the spacex launch director give instructions to the team we've also just heard the call the crew access arm retraction is underway great view from the camera inside the white room as we see the arm moving away from the dragon capsule one of the major events necessary to get down to T0. The next one coming up will be arming of the escape system on the Dragon capsule. Looking at the flight corridor, the ground stations, uh, the NASA tracking and data relay satellites are ready to support. So we just heard that verification that the launch escape system is armed. That is liquid oxygen you see venting off the rocket. That's completely normal and expected.
we are now just hours away. In a little over four hours. T minus four hours. T minus three and a half hours. T minus two hours and 50 minutes. We're T minus two hours, 36 minutes, 30 seconds. T minus two hours, 35 minutes. T minus one hour, 55 minutes, two hours until liftoff. T minus one hour, 46 minutes, 22 seconds. T minus one hour, 25 minutes, 54 seconds. Today is a historic launch. We are at T minus one hour. T minus 43 minutes, 18 seconds. T minus 23 minutes and 48 seconds. Upper level winds currently look acceptable for flight. Falcon 9 is in good health. No concerns on our end. Dragon is healthy. We're not tracking any issues here for the countdown. No issues at this time. The probability of violating conditions is still 60%. The concerns at liftoff are going to be flight light through precipitation, the thick cumulus crowds, and the possibility of violating the lightning rule. The weather is cooperating. And hopefully they will be today. We're not only looking at weather at the launch site, but we are looking around the world. Now the air in the sea space is clear. We just continue to monitor the weather. The one that we're mostly looking at right now is how much rain we're going to get between now and liftoff. Weather is trending the wrong way right now. Ten more minutes uh, past the T0. Weather conditions may improve, but Mike was not able to do that. We have an instantaneous window today. So at 17 minutes, we want to make that call because shortly after that, we will begin loading liquid oxygen onto the second stage. So if we're not going to have the opportunity to launch, launch the clock's going to run out and stand by. Continue to violate couple different weather rules that we now do not expect to clear in time to allow for a launch today. We go ahead and end uh, today's launch attempt. Launch control. We would end the launch auto sequence and proceed into the launch abort auto sequence, please. Launch abort has started. And Dragon SpaceX, unfortunately, um, we are not going to launch today. We've heard the call from the crew. They have been informed. Launch director Mike Kaler. Uh, has called a scrub for the day. Obviously, we can't control the weather. We came right down to the wire there, hoping we could just squeeze in between those cloud systems to get a launch today, but it wasn't to be. Uh, but it doesn't mean this we're done. We're going to have another attempt coming up in just three days, so we're going to be doing this all over again, essentially, on Saturday uh, on the 30th, and that launch attempt is going to be coming at 3.22 p.m. Eastern time, so a little bit earlier in the day. It's going to look largely the same to everything that we saw today with the crew waking up, going through suit up, making their way to the pad. So it's going to, we're going to feel a lot of deja vu, I think, on Saturday. Yep. And so that call out the, the locks, the liquid oxygen fuel pumping out of the first stage of the Falcon 9, everything looking good with that expecting about 40 minutes for all that fuel to come off. So again, once that fuel comes off, Bob and Doug will be able to disarm the launch escape system and that crew access arm will swing back out. And they'll be able to make their way back down. And a lot of the stuff that we saw today is gonna look very similar, but we're just gonna have to try again, cross our fingers, hope for a little bit weather. And it takes about 40 minutes for all of this propellant to come off of the Falcon 9. Now that there's no more prop propellant on any of the vehicles, they are safe to have disarmed the launch escape system and now are getting ready for that crew arm to swing back the hatch to open and for them to egress. Check tap. And there's that crew arm swinging arm back started. towards Dragon. Obviously, uh, we're still on the ground as uh, we're going through the post scrub operations to bring astronauts uh, Doug Hurley and Bob Bacon out of the capsule. And you can see now, hatch is coming open. That call out from the Dragon Corps up to the crew, letting them know that we are sending commands from the ground to rotate the seats. And you can see astronauts Doug Hurley, Bob Bacon rotating in their seat back to a more comfortable position to get in and out of the capsule. Hey, Dragon SpaceX, seats are upright. Um, thanks for the failing effort today, helping us test our scrub timeline, and we'll see you Saturday. So while we didn't launch, it was a pretty good uh, countdown and uh, scrub sequence. So we've got that good lesson learned under our belt, and we look forward to Saturday. We hope everyone else tunes in also, because this is really going to be a monumental moment. We're now going to look towards Saturday 
for America once again launching U.S. astronauts on American rockets from American soil. We're just all sitting here. We watched uh, Bob Benkin just climb out of his seat. Looks like he is out of Crew Dragon now and Doug Hurley following suit, no pun intended. And they are going to be turning the corner there, heading to the stairs that are going to take them down to the elevator. And we'll do it again on Saturday. It's actually very reassuring that all systems were go, you know, there was no problems with the vehicle at all, as Lauren, as you said, and it was just uh, some weather. And uh, I think if we have that same performance on Saturday and the weather gods give us some give us some good juju there, we'll be good to go. So I want to say congratulations to both of the teams um, and let's go. Let's go get this done. I know we're up for it. Saturday is going to be a great day. Um, and here we go again. Uh, the crew is making their way back to astronaut crew quarters where they're going to remain in quarantine um, until Saturday. They've been in quarantine for two weeks and there they will stay uh, to keep them safe and healthy for our next launch attempt. Again, uh, we had to stand down from launch today because of unfavorable weather conditions around Launch Complex 39A. But we're going to be ready to do this again uh, Saturday, May 30th. The new launch time will be 3.22 p.m. Um, and our coverage will begin live here on NASA TV at 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, Saturday. Um, so be sure to tune back in on NASA television and nasa.gov forward slash live if you're watching along online. And uh, we will be back here to take you through it every step of the way. Thanks for sticking with us and we will see you back here Saturday.